Howdy, Tinker Nerds. Wow, I really need a haircut. Gigalicious. Thanks. You look, uh, stosh galumpke licious as well. So this is the comments video for my prevent being tracked online tutorial. And hopefully after watching it, you learned how to be safer online. I do all my banking on Facebook. Aside from Rofile, let's see what other questions you guys had. What's the difference between a proxy and a VPN? Proxies are fine and provide a similar amount of protection for web browsers as VPNs do. But that's the problem. Proxies for the most part are application specific. Any application that you want to use that proxy has to be specifically configured for that proxy server. Alternatively, VPNs encrypt all incoming and outgoing internet messages. So with a VPN, you just connect once and all of your internet activity, including system updates and Spotify downloads are all encrypted. If I connect to a VPN, can't the hoster see what I'm doing? VPNs are so slow though, I wish there was another way. There are some VPNs that do data mining. I would enjoy a video specifically for VPNs. Whoa, whoa, whoa guys, one at a time. Wow, that's a lot of questions about VPNs. All right, so if you can imagine, when it comes to VPNs, if you send a request for a website, say Google, it has to then be encrypted sent securely to another computer in another location, possibly on the other side of the world, where it's then decrypted and sent out to the internet. Now this is done for every single signal that is sent and received from your computer. So yes, obviously it's gonna be quite a bit slower, but that's the price of security. As far as data mining is concerned, yeah, it's true that some VPN service providers could be collecting data on you. However, the alternative is to create your own VPN service and set it up however you like. Now, if only somebody would create a video tutorial on how to do that. Hmm. I must need to think harder. Now, if only somebody would create it. Okay, there we go. Would incognito mode also work? No, all that does is it stores Story your history, history and stops cookies being kept. The rest is the same as not having incognito on. Well said. If I'm using SSL and HTTPS, my ISP can see the data that I send to servers. I thought that SSL encrypts my data before sending it, and only the server could decrypt it. SSL and HTTPS are definitely very secure methods in which websites can encrypt your data once you're on them, but you have to be logged in first. And despite that, your ISP can still see which websites you're visiting, the URLs, and how long you're spending on those sites, which is plenty of information to start creating a profile on your online habits. We all need to only connect to the internet through Tails OS on a live CD. Awesome. Thanks for the And avoid ever logging into any and every service. Better still live in a cave and don't tell anybody. Kill and grow all your food and just avoid modern society altogether. That's a pretty good way of not getting tracked. Faking your death is probably a good idea as well. Wow. That kind of got out of hand. The best way to be invisible, even from the ISP, is Freenet. There is also Tor. Tinkernut, why not teach the real good stuff? <clears throat> Sorry, I uh sounded different in my head. So those are great alternatives that you can definitely use. The reason I didn't put them in this tutorial is because I've already created a tutorial for Tor previously and I'm planning on doing a tutorial specifically for Freenet. Okay, so this is something that you may or may not know. Your private key from Envelope is stored local, but it is not encrypted with Chrome or Windows encryption, so it's not a good way to hide your email. I was aware of that issue before the video. Yes, Melvelope does store your private key locally on your computer as plain text. But I still don't really see that as an issue. The only way for somebody to take it is to break into your computer and steal it. And if somebody is technically savvy enough to break into your computer, I don't see how an encrypted key is going to be any much more of a hassle for them to decrypt. That being said, I still think that Mailvelope is one of the best alternatives for encrypting webmail. But data that any company created in the U.S. has can be accessed by the FBI, etc. How about just using companies from other countries like France, where there is no such law? 
Although the Edward Snowden case has revealed that the U.S. is collecting and storing user data, this issue is not something limited only to the U.S. The Snowden case also revealed how countries such as Britain have similar tactics for collecting user data. And France, as you suggested, is especially known for its weak privacy laws and for easily giving in to corporate requests for user data. So the war isn't against a specific country, it's against all governing bodies that want to try and control the internet. Liked it and favorite. More videos like that, Gigafied, please. Yes, it's awesome to show us how to build an arcade game or a GPS box thingy, but educating us on how to protect our privacy on the internet is more cooler even than the Raspberry Pi. Thank you. Thanks, I'm glad you liked it. But I do feel that education, especially involving technology, should be more well-rounded. Understanding computers isn't about just security or programming or hardware or electronics. It's about all of them together. And to focus too heavily on one means that the others get neglected. Just keep an open mind and strive to learn things that maybe you're not as passionate about. Because you might find that it helps you understand your passion that much more. Could you do a video on how to set up a Raspberry Pi mail server? Stay tuned. It's definitely in the plans. All right, thanks guys for all the comments, and I will see you guys next week.